What's up people, my name is Kevin and welcome back to the OCD Gaming TV. Right, today we're going back to my roots, strategy gaming. And we're going to do Graviteam Tactics Operation Star. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a game similar to Close Combat. Um, but it's the but the close combat is two dimensional. This one is one dimen ah, three dimensional, and it's almost similar to um, Operation uh, Combat Mission Shock Force also. But uh, it, it's both of those games actually combined that gives it a unique feel. So as you can see, we've got a campaign, battle simulator, encyclopedia, options, controls, update. The game has been out for quite some time. And I think there's a, a, a another one of Gravity Tactics. I think it's Mew, Mew Operations or something like that. Okay, with this one, we have the um, Krakowa Defense Operations, the USR-China Incident, um, Afghanistan 79, and Defense of Quatica, uh, Guanavale. So what we're going to do is the Defense of Kwaitu Guani, uh, Guanavale. Right, um... If anybody knows anything about South Africa and their history, you would know that South Africa entered the border war in the late 60s through to, uh, let's say, the end of the 80s. Um, and we basically um, entered the war to support the UNITA forces in Angola. It's the rebel force that were fighting for uh, the, the liberation of Angola. Now, there was a few forces uh, that you do have to take note, like on the Blue Forces, which is South Africa. We had the SADF, the SADF, and we also had the UNITA Rebels, um, which was Angolans. And then on the Red Forces, well, depending on which side of the East or West, but on the Red Forces, we had the FAPLA. It was the, uh, the People's Liberation Army for the Liberation of Angola. And I think they were also called the MPLA. But uh, it depends on which side of the, the, the sphere of the world you are. You either call them MPLA or the FAPLA. And then they were supported by the Cubans. So it was basically a political war. It was democracy fighting against communism. So the Battle of Guanica, uh, Guanivale was actually uh, what caused... Uh, the South, South Africa to withdraw out of Ang uh, Angola. It was also actually the war that saw the end of apartheid. So this this, this war or this battle um, had a massive impact on the political stratosphere of South Africa. Uh, and it's it's uh, a lot of people overlook this um, this war or this battle. Um, the battle was actually. Um, uh, done in three phases um, it was, uh, or three operations. It started with op Operation Modular and then it went over to ops, uh, Operation Hooper and then it ended with Operation Packer. So basically what happened was, um, and I'm speaking now from my side being in the military, so I'm telling you of what I know in my country. So what basically happened was the the FAPLA or the MPLA forces, which consisted out of the 59th, the 25th and I can't remember, but it was three motorized uh, brigades that was advancing southeast to, um, to attack the UNITA forces. The UNITA forces was the, was the um, I think it, they were the 21st uh, motorized uh, infantry division. Or brigade, not a division. They were also a brigade, uh, and actually they were a battalion. No, no, yeah, they were a battalion. Well, there were other battalion or brigade. I can't remember now. So um, they actually wanted to destroy the UNITA forces, and if they destroyed the twenty-first UNITA forces, it would have meant the end of the UNITA, and it would have meant that the MPLA, the FAPLA, and the Cubans actually won the war, and it would have forced South Africa. Um, out of the out of Angola. Now there was a few things that happened also with this. Um, the UN uh, actually had a massive interference also in this war because this was the first place where they put sanctions. The, the, yeah, the UN actually put sanctions on South Africa and stipulated they, that South Africa was not allowed to attack Guanavale. This uh, Guanavale, uh, quite a Guanavale, was actually a little town um, or city. Well, was actually the size of a town. 
So um, the communists or the Red Forces actually, uh, they use that, that small, small thing that we're not allowed to attack the town. They use that to their maximum advantage because they hit all their forces basically in that town and South Africa was basically not allowed to attack them. So what happened with Ops Modular was South Africa uh, with the 61 mechanized brigade, uh, the 61, if you know uh, anything about the South African history, you would have known that the 61 mech um, mechanized brigade was one of our elite forces. Um, even up to today, up to today, if you served in the 61st mechanized brigade, then ah uh, battalion, you would have been. It's like special forces almost to us. And they predominantly made use of the rattle. It was a uh, um, uh, armored combat vehicle. It consisted out of a 19 millimeter anti-tank. Uh, it consisted out of the 20 millimeter, the 12.7 millimeter, the 60 millimeter mortar. They had some caspers and buffaloes, and they had a lot of vehicles. It, it, it was a, as you can, as the word says, mechanized brigade, uh, battalion. Um, but they were established in 1978, I think, and but I know for a fact they were disbanded in 2005. But again, there's talks of reopening them again because we didn't do need them. The, they were disbanded due to financial implications and a lot of other things. So basically, what happens? Ops Modular started off where the South African forces, the SADAF, they uh, moved on an offensive to intercept the uh, MPLA and FAPLA forces. I think it started in 1987. Uh, I think it was in November. Um, and the, the, the SADAF objectives were to protect the UNITA forces and also to see if they could destroy the, um, the MPLA and FAPLA. So what actually happened was the South Africans made contact with the MPLA FAPLA forces and they actually caused uh, them, I think they, they made contact too with them this, uh, at the southeast of that uh, Kwaito Guanavale near the river. And they actually f uh, caused the MPLA FAPLA forces to go to a halt and take in defensive um, positions. That's when um, Operation Hooper, which we're going to play today, started. Um, because Operation Hooper was actually where the Sada forces in conjunction with the UNITA forces actually went into offensive operations to try and destroy the MPLA and FAPLA forces once and for all because the 59th, the 21st, after 25th, I think it was the 27th also, they were pretty demoralized. They took heavy, heavy casualties during Ops Modular. So they were down in their dumps. Now, um, the Cubans, Fidel Castro, they saw that and as we, as they were backing the communists, they, they sent an additional 15,000 troops to go and support, um, the MPL at Guanavale. Now, just to give you some figures, the, uh, you all know what the size of a brigade is. I'm not going to tell you the size of a brigade, but uh, the MPLA, they had three brigades. And they were supported by 15,000 troops and equipment from Cubans or Cuba. The Sara forces, they had only 61 mechanized battalion, which consisted, which was supported also by um, the UNITA forces. Now, the UNITA had their own brigade, it was the 21st Brigade. And then, but the South Africans only had 2,000 soldiers, and I think they had about 25 tanks. The Willifant Mark 1 tank, battle tank, main battle tank, supported now via the various um, anti tanks and rattle weapon systems and so on. So, um, Ops Hooper, what made Ops Hooper very interesting, and a lot of people don't know this, but the war, the operation started with South Africa making use of a smart bomb, and in my opinion, it was the first smart bomb ever used to take out a, a central bridge that the Cubans and the MPLA forces would have used to advance inwards. Now, this smart bomb was actually a guided UAV drone. So that was the first UAV drone used to destroy a bridge, and that was in 1988. So I just think of your, or I think it was, yeah. But eventually, uh, both sides, um, actually, they came to a stalemate, and both sides claiming victory. 
Uh, actually, it was a massive victory for the Sada forces because we took very few casualties. I think we took like 12 or something like that casualties. And directly after Ops, Hooper, Ops, uh, Packer started. And that was also to push out the the um, MPLA, Farpla and Cuban forces out of the area and to destroy them to in total. So and that also, again, culminated into a stalemate and both sides declaring their victors. And this caused both parties to go to the um, discussion tables and it was basically the end of the border war. Okay, so that's just some history for you to take note of. Um, <laughs> I know I said a lot, but it, it's always nice to, to have knowledge of these things. Okay, so like I said, we're going to do Ops Hooper. So the date is Ops Hooper. Um, I see this mentioning uh, Ops Modular here and stuff like that, but it's basically wrong. Wrong. Uh, so, okay, we've got three. We've got the, I think this is the uh, uh, initial... Yeah, you see, um, they say yeah, the 25th Infantry Brigade and the 20, the 50th. It was actually the 59th uh, inf uh, motorized brigades. Okay, after UNITA. The government troops attacked UNITA base in Mavinga in Cuba, Cubango province, but failed UNITA forces supported by South during the Operation Modular has arrived close to the frontier base of... Okay, I don't think we're going to do that one. I don't want to play as the Angola or the MPLA. Uh, we're going to play as the blue forces. Um, it's the third and the fourth UNITA infantry battalions. I think they fell under the 21st uh, brigade. After an unsuccessful attack on the government forces, the Colonel K. So you're basically playing as the UNITA. We're not going to play as UNITA. I want to play as 6 1 mechanized, the SADA forces. So. Battered in previous battles, the 25th Infantry Brigade retreated across the river Quanivale. Your combat mission at dawn. Attack enemy positions and prevent the enemy to gain a foothold on the bank of the river near the Tumpu point. Take the river crossing near the town and exit the outskirts of Quarta Guanavale. It's actually difficult to say. Okay, so we start off with some battles. Okay, awesome. Okay, so... Um, what basically happens is this is the the battle map the campaign map so and all these points is points that you have to basically take the red well it's obviously your forces i think the orange is the unita forces your allies yeah they're definitely the unita forces being supported and then red okay the forces that you see here in this uh, checkered boxes they're actually reinforcements and they will come up uh, during the turns because this thing works on a, a turn-based system. So after a set few turns, the forces will come be available and you can utilize them. So how it works is you get a turn to move, the enemy forces got a turn to move. So the enemy forces is all in blue. We don't know where they are. So they're doing their movement. We are doing our movement. And yeah, okay, so basically we moved. Okay, it moved four. So we've got a battle, one engagement here. We've got about four engagements. But this one, I don't think I can fight this one. I'm not sure. Right, let's, let's just read the, the little description here on top. The historical background. After an unsu unsuccessful attack on government force in the Guana Gumbo province at our base in Mavinga, UNITA troops supported by our forces during Operation Mono took to the nearest approaches to the government troops supported base in Guadalcanavale. Right, 25 February, turn one. Battered, okay, that's what I just read now previously. Okay, but you can pause it and read it too for yourself. Okay, so I must just um, exit game and return. I must just check what's going on here. Statistics. Okay, so we, what is this? Is this units or be, I think this is sections or something. Okay, but nothing would have happened here. No. Um, yeah, the buttons is a bit weird and I have not played this game in quite some time. Okay, so this battle or engagement is supported by the 61 motorized battalion, Alpha Squadron. Ammo and fuel is 100, squads 3, personnel 16, weapons 3. It's also, we got, I think these are some, the Zilva. These are some uh, Rattles. The Quarter. 
the fundamental. Okay, so let's start with this one. Usually this thing, it always throws me either starting in the morning or the battle in the evening. And I do know, even in today, the military forces, they do like to attack with first light and last light. Okay, so now we've got a deployment zone. So we are on the attack. So they're in defense. Okay, so we've got Kuru, Lomba and Tumpu 3. Is there any more? And what? Kwandu. And there's another Kubango. So we've got a few objectives that we can take. You do not need to take all the objectives. There is a thing where you can ask for like for a ceasefire and stuff like that. Okay, so what do we have here? What do we have? This looks like a Rattle 20. Okay, so this is a Rattle Squadron. Or Platoon. This is also a 20... This is also a 20. Uh, this gun wouldn't be pointing and the, the, the rear browning would never be pointing for it's actually uh, an anti-air weapon so it would have actually have been pointing to the back. Okay, do I have any 90s? I need to get something um, hard hitting. Uh, this is a 12.7. 12.7. Uh, it's a 20. Oh, and the troops are... What, what weapon do they have there? Okay, they've got the FN here. <laughs> or the R1. With the LMG. Uh, so it doesn't seem that I've got any... Um, 90s with me, which is pretty bad. Um, Again, 20s, 20s and 12.7. So, uh, I do hope, I can't see what this one is. I really do hope that there's no um, armor out here. So, uh, 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 it's going to be interesting to see how they play, um, actually, these rattles. Rattles were actually, they dominated the battlefield that time. Especially the Rattle 90. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got a Browning team, and we have a 12.7, and oh, a Rattle 90. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, this 90, I want them there. The 12.7 is basically a command rattle. We use it as a command rattle. Uh, let's put him there. Uh, it's going to give us a nice cover. Um, I think that's basically... I don't want to put my forces too close because uh, I don't want to get uh, destroyed. Roy, finish. Ew, ew, shit. Okay. Okay. All right, let's get these forces. Uh, Dang it. Now, this thing has got some loud noises, people, so I do apologize for that. Um, no matter, you also move to there. Um, guys. COVID move there. Actually, I need to get these guys also. It's gonna take some time, guys. But COVID move. <laughs> the demo I played, a lot of my rattles ended up falling on their uh, their roll over, and that's not really true. So there should be some troops in here and stuff. What is 
this. It's a 50 cal. Where is the matter of this on the matter? It's there. It's there. I don't want to move them too fast because that will cause them to fall apart. Or okay, so come on, come on. Uh, this one has got a lot of buttons, so you do need to... I'm not quite familiar with all the buttons and stuff. Right. Okay, uh, where's the debus button? Well, while they're moving... Okay, let's slowly move up these forces to here. Okay, Van Amarve and Lakota, they're moving extremely slowly. Okay, they're not moving. <laughs> Why are you not moving, you assholes? Typical line of convoy movement. So basically, I said African tactics were in that era was um, as soon as they made contact, the rattles would come to an halt. Both doors, left and right, would fo fold open. The infantry sections inside would debuzz, forming up a, a fire line, and then they would do a thing we call fire and movement. Yeah, it's like crisscrossing each other moving on to the objective and destroying all forces uh, we do it that or they did it that way because it had also a psychological impact on the enemy because now you see you know if you're a force of 100 and you see these 12 guys just getting out of a vehicle while under fire walking towards you shooting at you you would think well what the hell are these special forces or what that gives that that psychological shock also where the hell are these forces Right, what, 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 vehicle lost? Ah, oh, dang it! Okay, uh, that happens because we are driving without lights on. Enemy contact.
I like it, they got the tactics right. Let's just pause and check what's going on. Okay, so we're being attacked now from a few sides. Okay, but this side is taking heavy casualties. Um, what do we lose here? Where's this rattle? Okay, personnel nine wounded, two killed. Uh, no, killed and heavily wounded, three concussed, two. Uh, heavy vehicle, okay, so this rattles on fire. Dang it. And they're bunching up here now, which is not good. Which is not good. This one is also... Two heavy wounded, one concussed, three wounded. Okay, so luckily nothing, no one dead. Okay, let's continue. Check to uh, shit. Uh, sound, sound. Okay, we can't do anything about the sound. Okay. I think I have to... Jeez, I don't know. I have to break off force to come and support them now. We got totally ambushed here. I have to withdraw these forces. Come 
on guys, come on guys, we need to support these guys, come on. Fire movement. It looks like we're doing quite badly, but we're not doing too bad. Okay, this one I think let's ask for a ceasefire. Okay, we've taken that key point. Dang it, they have an anti tank gun here. Destroy it. Forces. Ah, uh, no, you know what, man. Back there. Why aren't these guys moving? What are they doing? Guys, come on. March. Huh, these guys are just refusing to march. Bastards, you'll be shot. Or panic.
took a shit load of punishment. If we can at least take out this position, it would be well worth it. Speeding up time a bit. Does this guy not want to move? Nah, I don't know what's up with that guy. Okay, so our center force was totally destroyed. Gladstone that came off thus was That's a pity and then our right side force was also severely battered um, Let's go and hunt that way Jeez, that bird is annoying. Uh, let's go up to Lomba. Uh, we're gonna hunt there. I'm gonna increase the speed again. Key point taken. There was a tank or something driving there. I wonder what tank this is. Oh, this this little tanky just gave me heavy, heavy, heavy attacks. Why aren't you guys moving? Okay, at least we took that point, but geez, this, this installation. We needed more forces here, to be honest. Let's pause. You guys going to defensive here. Okay, uh, where was this enemy contact? Up here. There. Right, guys. Now the question is, should I attack them? <laughs> um, they're pretty defended. We are... Um, we're there. Uh, what is this? This is the what? 
mounted infantry. Uh, let's attack. Let's hunt. Oh, and they started. Nice truck. Ex all the executed partially. <laughs> Move on to the objective. Come on, guys. Come on. Get some speed going. Prison is captured, nice. We did okay there. Right, and okay, we took that point also. Right, let's move up to Tumpa Tree. Gonna hunt that way. Our left flank is pretty much secure. So these guys just took out those enemies there that was moving in. Nice. I just put them on guard mode here so they can at least protect this point. Pause contact way. Ah, uh, shit. Uh, let's go. So it's from the Marva that's doing quite good. The Silva and the Kotla got their asses kicked. It looks like these guys are in the open, they're not dug in. Okay, come on, let's get, let's get on it.
on guys, pull out, pull out, pull out. Okay, uh, it wasn't a very successful. <laughs> Alright, let's check. Uh, victory conditions, losses in territory, losses, okay. Forces before the battle, I had 80, uh, 859, 834 forces after the battle. Uh, well, they lost a lot more than we lost. I think that's right. Forces? No. Um, territory before battle, territory after battle. How does this work? Casualties. Ninety. I lost ten vehicles. Dang it. Uh, Okay. So that was not a good attack. Loading battlefield. Uh, so Gladstone retreated. Okay, so what? That's not right. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we should not have withdrawn. Um, okay, so we just lost this entire front. You should. Okay, okay. So we learned. So we learned. I thought actually we 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 did quite good there because we took all the locations but apparently it doesn't work like close combat okay so so we learn so we learn well guys i hope you enjoyed it that was a brisk morning engagement where we apparently lost so um yeah uh we did not do very good in that one so they kicked the crap out of us so yeah we we, we in quite some uh shit so on the next mission, we will go into the second engagement here by, uh, I can't see the point, but let's call it 1208. And hopefully it will go a lot better with Pretorius, von Rensburg and Herzog. So guys, I hope you liked it. I know this video was a bit long and it started with a lot of uh, history and stuff, but you need to know the background of these things. But I hope you enjoyed at least that little bit. If there's any questions about that, please feel free to ask me. If I do not know the answer, I will always go look for an answer. And remember, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. And also share this video with your friends. If you go know any historical buffs that would like to know this type of stuff, like I said, I'm always up. You can always hit me on my Twitter also. Um, I do communicate a lot on my Twitter account. So yeah, leave a comment, leave a like, dislike, doesn't matter. Leave a positive, leave a negative feedback. Everything always helps to the end. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and check you in the next video. Enjoy.